Hi, so today we're going to look into uh, Filipino grammar. So let's start. So the first thing that we need to understand is how to conjugate verbs. So verbs are conjugated using affixes. Let's get, um, let's study some examples. So for example, um, among the affixes used for active verbs are um, mag, and ma. So another set of affixes, and these are for non-active verbs, are in or hin, ma, transitive, or paki, i, an, or han, and pa, in. Very confusing, but don't worry. Let's look at some examples so you don't get confused. Okay, so let's look at the verb or the root word kain, for example. Now, we use um when the when the doer or the actor is the focus of the action. For, so, we say kumain. So, remember to put um before the, va, the first vowel of the root word. So, for example, I can say kumain ako ng kanin. Literally, that means ate I rice. Nang rice. Or I ate rice. Okay? Now, we use in or the in affix when the emphasis is on the direct object. In this case, kanin or rice is the direct object. So you say the direct object first, which is kanin. So the sentence becomes, kanin ang kinain ko. Now, verbs can also change according to number. So, however, Let's pretend you don't know how to change verbs. Not changing the verb does not make the sentence ungrammatical. It's not done in everyday Filipino. So, for example, um, we say, Kumain ang mga bata ng kanin, right? Um, the children ate rice. Ideally, you use the affix nagsi to make your verb plural. So, you say, Nagsikain ang mga bata ng kanin. What happens if you just use kumain? That's okay. So, some native speakers don't say nagsikain, some do, and it's only important for you to kind of know the affix nagsi just in case you hear it, right? So, you know it's also one way of saying the same thing. Let's now talk about voice. You may have noticed that the passive form is more common than the active voice. So, for example, if I say, um, ako ay umiinom ng kape araw-araw or I drink coffee every day, it's a little bit awkward. What is more common is to say, umiinom ako ng kape araw-araw. And the literal translation of that is, drink, I, coffee every day. So, however, active voice is used in written Filipino. So, that's a thing for, for many learners or for many learners whose um, native language is English, um, it's a little bit confusing because most of you are used to using the active voice. Let's talk about the differences. So we're still talking about verbs, okay? So let's, let's now talk about verb tenses and verb aspects. So there are two schools of thoughts, schools of thought about this. So, if you're using the textbook, for example, of Aspillera, and we go now to Aspillera, um, Aspillera lists five tenses. It's a little bit like English. So, according to Aspillera, we can look into the imperative tense, the infinitive, past, present, and future. This is very much like English. However, if you were to use another textbook, for example, the textbooks of Ramos and Schachter, right? Um, Ramos and Schachter would argue that Tagalog does not, or Filipino, does, does not re really concern itself with um, tenses. What we have are aspects. So, what does this mean? So, we have the completed or perfective, incompleted or imperfective, and contemplated. So, that's what we have. So, let's look at formulas. So, for example, so there's a whole set of formulas that you just need to remember. For example, when you use the um, um prefix or suffix, so you put the, uh, for the completed aspect, you put um before the first vowel, so you form it 
with um before the first vowel of the root word plus the root word. For the incompleted aspect, you get the first two syllables of the completed form plus root word. So these are all formulas. So then for the contemplated, it's the not contemplative, okay? Contemplated, the first syllable of the root word plus root word. Okay, now let's look at the imperative form. So for um, use um before the first vowel plus the root word. So the verb should be accompanied always um, by pronouns. So for example, here, lumangoy ka or swim. Don't just say lumangoy, swim. So in, in English, you just say swim, right? But in Filipino, remember, you can't just say lumangoy. You need um, a pronoun. So what you're trying to say is swim, you, lumangoy ka. That's the literal meaning of the word. Now let's look at the infinitive form of the verb. So the infinitive the form is used only with helping verbs or when preceded by the marker a ah, to form a subject. So, in Tagalog, there, there are always markers, which we'll talk about later, but um, you use, you put ang before common nouns. So, for example, um, you say, in example, gusto kong sumayaw ng tinikling. Okay? So, what does it mean? want I to dance. So that's the infinitive form. Your sumayaw is to dance, nang tinikling. Want I to dance, nang tinikling. Okay, now let's move on to the recent perfective aspect. So what is this? So it expresses action completed just before speaking. It is equivalent to both the past perfect and the present perfect tense. So what is confusing is, in, in English, you have the past perfect tense and the present perfect tense, and Filipinos usually get confused with this perfect tenses because we don't have this in Filipino or Tagalog. So the only actor, only actor focus verbs are inflectable and only with the following suffixes. Um, ma, maka, magpa, and ma. Let's look at some examples. So for the exam, for the suffix um, so we say, Kaiinom ko palang ng kape. Look at um, ka here. The moment you say, kaiinom ko palang ng kape, and you have ka, right? And then you have the first syllable of the root word. And then you have the root word. It means, what you're trying to say is, you have just um, had some coffee. Or you say, ka lalangoy ko palang. And again, you have ka, right? And you have la, which is the first syllable of langoy or to swim. So if you put this all together, ka plus la plus langoy meaning to swim, kala langoy ko pa lang, what you're trying to say is you've just gone swimming. Okay? Or when you say ka 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 in ko pa lang ng almusal, again, ka, ka, which is the another ka, which is the first syllable of the word ka in or eat. So you say ka 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 in, I've just eaten. So, kakakain ko pa lang ng almusal, what you're trying to say is, I've just eaten breakfast. Okay, so, let's move on now and let's go to another topic, 